my PCC. So if you guys hit the like button, drop a comment in the comment section now. I need that support. So let's jump right into it. Um, we're going to talk about seven Proverbs about women that you must know, right, out of the Bible. And as you guys know, if you don't know, Proverbs is written by King Solomon. King Solomon had, I think, 700 wives and 300 concubines. So if anybody knows about women, he did. But not only that, he had wisdom above all the men on the earth. Um, so I'm going to read out of Proverbs and we're going to talk about what King Solomon said about women are in Proverbs. And right before we get into the women's stuff, the Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 6 verse 33, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Now that scripture was talking about food, clothing, and drink. But I also believe it refers to shelter. I also believe that the, if the Bible says that man is not as, it's not good for man to be alone, that that could refer to a wife or a companion as well. So bef I want to set that precedent and foundation. The most alpha male thing that anybody can do is seek the kingdom of God first. You hear a lot of people saying, do this and do that. Don't put all your focus on women. If you chase after women, they'll run. But if you chase your purpose, women will chase you. Well, if you chase the kingdom of God first, everything else will be added to you is what the scripture says. So the most alpha male thing you can do is reconnect and reconnect reconcile with the reason why you're here in the first place so that you can return back to the source by which you come from right that's why you're here that's why you're alive so um there's, there's nothing you can do but and when you when that's your sole purpose and focus not only will you have everything you need but you'll have the best of whatever you need that is for the fulfillment of your purpose while you're here right um so let me just say that first right you don't just want a good wife you want a wife that can contribute to the fulfillment of your purpose here on earth right to help you fulfill your, the reason why you're here Somebody that can assist and be a help meet in that process to further your journey and your mission to make sure you're operating rightly in the will of God. So with that being said, we're going to start off with Proverbs chapter 31 verses 10, right? It says an excellent wife who can find she is far more precious than Jews. One of the things I hear a lot of men saying today is there's not a lot of good women anymore. Oh, where do I find a good woman? We got the feminist movement out here. We got all these alphabet communities and the way they're indoctrinating women in the school system. We got women being funded into the workforce. There's all these systems that is uh, uh, influencing and socially conditioning the minds of women to not be wives, to not be good mothers anymore. So where am I going to find a good wife? There's not as many. Women are being promiscuous. We got all these reality TV shows. We hear every excuse in the world for why it's not easy to find a good woman or a good wife, right? But... What would you say if I told you that over 2,000 years ago, King Solomon said, an excellent wife who can find? He says, so who can find? So the meaning is an excellent wife has always been an excellent wife and anything excellent has never been common, right? So what you want to make sure that you're doing is if you want to find an uncommon and excellent wife, you want to make sure that you're completely and wholeheartedly seeking the kingdom of God with your whole life and your whole heart so that you can have the wife that God gives to you, right? Or the one, the wife that he makes accessible to you, not the one you choose in and of yourself with your own thoughts, your own wisdom and your own discernment. So if you completely seek in the kingdom of God and you want to make sure that you, you're getting the person that's presented to you by the almighty who knows what you need. Far more than you know what you need to understand you better than you know yourself, who has the hairs on your head numbered. The Bible says a sparrow doesn't fall out of the sky beyond God's watch. He sees everything. So when you seek in his kingdom with all your heart, you will indeed have what you, what's going to further the fulfillment of your purpose here on this earth. And you will love it. Right. And that's the God is God is just and righteous. He's holy and he's perfect. Right. So I just want to make sure that um, I, I, I say that it's not that it was hard. To, it's, it's not easy to find a good wife now. No, it's always been. Because an excellent wife, somebody that's admirable, somebody that you can have joy and, and confidence in, has never just been every woman walking down the street, right? So we're going to get into what an excellent wife would look like, some of that. Like, how do you, what, what, what are the markers and the signs of an excellent wife? All right, so let's, let's get into Proverbs 31, verse 20, um, really, really quick. And let's just see, because sometimes I wonder where guys are looking for their wife at. Right. So Proverbs verse 31, verse 20, or where, or where they're looking for these good women in the midst of them complaining that there aren't many good women or suggesting that it's so difficult and hard to find a good woman. I'm a bit curious as to where are you finding all the bad women at versus where are you looking and seeking to potentially find one of the good ones? So Proverbs verse 31, verse 20 says she opens her hand to the poor and reaches out her hand to the needy. Um, so. How, how about you go down to the local soup kitchen and volunteer and see what the women look like in there? 
Now, of course, the majority of them are not going to be your wife. You're looking for one woman that's going to be your wife. So how about you just go to the soup kitchen and see who is down there helping and feeding the needy at the soup kitchen, right? How about you go to a church or some place that has a ministry of going on the streets and giving food to the poor and see who's in that ministry helping to give food to the poor. So if one of the signs and markers of a good woman or a good wife is that she opens her hands to the poor and reaches out her hands to the needy, then why don't you go to locations where people are doing that and see who are the women in the midst of them that are doing that? Um, Because that's telling you something about her heart. You know what I was thinking about um, actually just a little while ago is that you know, some people have this attitude when, when it comes to poor people or homeless people, and they say, well, you know, they made their decisions. They, this person did drugs. This person squandered all their money. These people made their choices. You made your choice, and, and now you're homeless. I'm not going to give them my money. They made their own life decisions, right? If God was like us, we would all be destroyed. If God had that same attitude like we do, oh, well, or like some of us do, right? Oh, okay. Oh, you made your decisions, you messed up in life. Now it's all over. I'm not going to help you. I'm not going to be God to you. I'm not going to answer your prayers. I'm not going to send food and help your way. You made all your choices and the rest is up to you, right? The Bible says be perfect for our father in heaven is perfect, right? For God makes it rain on the just and unjust. He makes the sun shine on the just and unjust. He doesn't take the rain away from unjust people or the sun away from unjust people. He makes it rain and sunshine on all of us. So how do we get in our attitude to think that it's okay to have an attitude that we won't share and be charitable with those who have wasted their life away? Sure, they've made tons of mistakes. Sure, they've wasted their life away. Sure, they've done drugs. Sure, they've done criminal things. Whatever they have done is irrelevant because if God was like us, we would all be destroyed. None of us would have gotten a leg up. None of us would have been helped. None of us would have been assisted out of our circumstances and our situation. So in that, in in saying that, right, Are you looking for a woman that has the spirit to want to help the misfortunate, want to help the people that made mistakes, that squandered their life away, that made, that did accidents, that was born into unfortunate situations. And as a result, they turned to drugs that, that regardless of what their circumstances was, regardless of what you may think they're quote unquote, I don't like using this word. Well, what goes around comes around is brought to them. That's why they're in their circumstances to know that we are the call to be perfect as God is perfect and and let it rain and sunshine on the just and the unjust. So how about you look for a woman that has it in her heart to, to let it rain and shine sun on the just and the unjust, irregardless of what they've done. Because we are called to be as our Father in heaven is, which is perfect, right? Um, so just, just that, that that's a, where, where are you looking for her at, right? If you're looking for her on Tinder, perhaps you might accidentally come across one woman on the whole app that may be in the midst of feeding the homeless, she's swiping on Tinder, right? Uh, if you're looking for them in the club, you know, you, you can get you can probably find somebody on the street, but where are you looking for these women at? What classes and groups and organizations are you signing up for, being a part of? What work are you doing? See, the beauty of when you start doing the work that God would have you do is you start meeting other people that are also doing that work. And in the midst of those people, they're going to be women. So a woman that already has that heart, you know what I'm saying? Or not, not just you got to meet her and try to coach her and shape her and counsel her and, 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 and push her to have a better heart. That you already meet her in the midst of having a soft and gentle heart. Right? Next, next verse we're going to get um, is Proverbs 31, verse 30. Let's talk about this just a bit. It says, charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Let me, let me, help, let me say something really quick. You are not enough as a man, no matter how good of a leader you might think you might be, no matter how handsome you think you might be, no matter how talented or skilled or charming you think you might be, no matter how good with women you think you might be, no matter how many approaches that you've done, you are not good enough in yourself to keep a woman honorable in and of yourself. You're just a man, right? You are just a man and you've lied before you've deceived before you've you know we've all done our sins and our wrongs before we've all done things that haven't been honorable and we're striving to do better right but in a woman being the weaker vessel being more a little bit more susceptible to temptation than you might be you are not enough to keep her on the righteous path in and of yourself right she has to have a fear and reverence for something greater than you that says you know what the commandment of God is that I am to submit onto my husband and the, and the, and the order is, is God, Christ, man, and then women. So 
it doesn't matter how I feel about this. It doesn't matter how I feel about submission. It doesn't matter if I like it or not. None of these things matter, right? I'm doing my duty to God because that is the commandment that I've been given. So in submitting to my husband and being honorable to the men in my life, that is my duty and commandment from God. So I fear, I fear God. Of course, I, you love and respect and honor your husband, but I also fear and revere the almighty God and he's told me to submit. If it all has to be up to her, there's going to be some conflicts and challenge because like I said, Eve was in the garden. God told Eve not to eat the apple. Eve had a more direct relationship with God. Uh, they was closer than, than we, they, you know, they were in the garden of Eden, right? They, they, had, they had known no sin yet. They were closer than, than a lot of us have been. And yet that still wasn't enough for Eve to overcome the temptation of the serpent. She still ate the apple, right? She still committed sin. So you think that, and and she had Adam, she had a husband as well. She had Adam and I'm sure he was a great man. He was the first man. I'm sure he was, he was strong in stature and beauty and all these things in every way. Um, And yet she didn't obey him and she didn't obey the commandment of God. At, or so do you you think that sure enough that even that that sure woman is going to do better than Eve in and of herself just just in and of herself now if you want to roll the dice on that that's up to you but if you have to meet a woman that says you know no 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 I, I can't do that because I fear God when she hugs you and she gives you that little chest hug and she said and, and, and you're like man why are you why are you hugging me like that oh I'm sorry because I fear God I don't want to put myself in position to offend my father in heaven. So have you ever heard it leave a woman's mouth that she doesn't want to do X, Y, and Z because she fears God? Not because she don't want to be judged by her friends. Not because she don't think it's going to look right. Not because you don't, she don't want you to think that she's something negative. But because, no, I'm not. it's not about you. It's not about me. It's about I fear the God, God Almighty, creator of the heavens and the earth, the seas and all that's in it. The father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I fear him. And that's why... I don't want to do X, Y, and Z and hang out with these people, right? I don't fear hanging out late at night because something could happen. No, I fear offending the Almighty. So imagine you hear that leave a woman's mouth. Unprovoked. Just you hear her discussing how she doesn't want to do something because of her fear of God. That's a godly woman, right? And it says... uh, A woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain. It's not that you you don't want you can't have a beautiful wife. We would all love a beautiful wife. But you ever not known somebody was as beautiful as they were until you walked up to them and started having a conversation? You said, "Wow, I didn't know this woman was wow." When I she looked average from far away, but when I started talking to her, she started to look real beautiful. And it's because what was on the inside once you got close to her began to shine so bright on the outside where you was able to see a level of beauty that no one could else could see from far away. Unless they took the step of courage to get close to her, no one would have ever known how beautiful she was because she's not out there trying to be beautiful. She's beautiful internally. So that's what you want. You're not looking for charm or beauty out externally. You want to look for somebody that when you walk up to them, they become more beautiful. But you got to go up to those people first, right? You got to be in those environments. Proverbs 14.1 says, Every wise woman builds her house, but the foolish one tears it down with her own hands. This is the mentality that you're looking for. You're looking at a mentality of a home builder, right? You're looking for the mentality of a woman that knows that the household is her responsibility to build her house. When you're out in the world, if she wants to be out in the world while you're out in the world, and you just have to work that out. But who's building the home? Who's building the members in the home? Who's, whose primary role and responsibility and focus is that? Now, it's not that it may not come a time where you guys might both have to do X, Y, and Z, but in her heart, You know, she should be wanting to build her home and know that the words that leave her mouth are building words. There's two kinds of people. There's people that look to build and people that look to critique and criticize and complain. And I'm sure we know a lot of people that quarrel and complain. There are a lot of women and right that quarrel and complain. They're nagging and picking at everything that they see. That's when, when somebody's nagging and picking, you know what it means to pick? You pick out like Jenga, right? You're plucking your house down, right? I can see a flaw in somebody and say, hey, um... Yeah, I don't like the way that you pick your fork up like that. And I can say, honey, you know, it'd be really nice. It would look really proper if you held your fork like this. This, That's one of building versus one is plucking it down. If I'm always nagging, then I'm plucking it down. But when you make sure that woman is speaking uplifting words of building up, the building words, right? Well, she's in her mouth, she's building, not complaining, 
but building, where she, her eyes just focus on what she does have and not so much what she doesn't. And if she sees something that she doesn't, she speaks on it in a way to build it up so that it is what she wants, right? Um, Proverbs 21 verse 9 says, it is better to live in a corner of the housetop than in a house share with a quarrelsome wife. Now, let me, let me, in, in my experience, people don't just become quarrelsome at random. People that are quarrelsome are quarrelsome at the very beginning, right? It, it doesn't take much, it doesn't take long for it to come out. There's people that's willing to listen, to learn, to think, and then maybe ask you a question about what you said if they don't agree, versus somebody that wants to quarrel with you over, the, over it, right? So just, just make sure that, a, so the Bible said it's better to not have a wife at all, pretty much. It's better to live on a rooftop than be in a household with a quarrelsome wife, because that's going to pluck a man down, Right? The point of two and two two people coming together to become one is to be better together than they were individually. That together coming together, they become one new body, more complete, that can do more together than one of them could do apart, right? So make sure that, and, and there's a lot of scriptures in the Bible about a quarrelsome woman, so be careful that you're not overlooking somebody that's quarrelsome just because they're beautiful. Because that quarrelsome attitude can turn somebody really unattractive after a short amount of time. They may look beautiful as you're trying to get close to them, but once you're finally close to them, their beauty begins to wane if they remain quarrelsome. And no matter how beautiful they are, it doesn't look the same anymore. Um, this is Proverbs verse 12, verse 4. It says, An excellent wife is the crown of her husband, but she who brings shame is like rottenness in his bones. I remember I did a video a long time ago saying a woman is a man's crown. And the meaning of that is, if you, when you have an upstanding, honorable, respectable wife, men reverence you as well. Because, and I'm not talking about a wife that's beautiful. You all look at a guy that has a wife that's beautiful, and, and, she, and, 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 and she's so much not his crown that she'll lustfully eye down his wife in front of him because of how she's presenting herself. And she looks beautiful and great, but she's so much not his crown that you don't even honor him as king enough you don't honor him as having a crown enough not to eye down his own wife in lust. But when a woman is a man's crown and she's presenting herself as a noble and honorable woman that is a crown onto a man, it adds a level of respect to that man where you don't stare down his woman, right? Because she's carrying herself with such a level of integrity and respect, right? Considering her husband and how she dresses and adorns herself and goes out and walks and talks, that you look and reverence that man and say, wow, he, he has a submissive, loving, kind, and beautiful wife. And you, 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 you honor that man, you honor him with more respect that he's raised up a woman to be that submissive and kind. You know, when you see a man that has a really loving, kind and submissive wife, you're like, wow, I wish I had a wife like that. And, and all men know that we, we, all men wish they had a stable home with a submissive and loving wife. All the running around with women, that stuff pales in comparison. And when you see a man that said, man, I've been with my wife 30 years and she the best thing that ever happened to me. She's been a crown to my life. She honors me. She respects me. She does good by my children. She raises me up. I mean, she raises my children up and takes care of my home to the best of her ability. She's submissive and kind and loving and patient and joyful, right? There's a level of crown that had, that, that man has. When he has such a woman. So you want to make sure you're looking for a woman that can be a crown onto your life. Right? Where men ain't eyeing your woman down and disrespecting you because of your, your wife is walking out showing herself. They ain't disrespecting you by lusting after her in front of you. But they're honoring you as a crown and saying, wow, look at that man. Look at the wife that he has. Right? Proverbs 19 verse 13 says, a foolish son is a ruin to his father and a quarreling and a wife's quarreling is a continual dripping of rain. I just wanted to bring that out to show there are a lot of verses about a wife quarreling, a quarreling wife. That is something you want to be aware of and careful of, right? Be, be careful of quarreling people in general, but at least the people in general don't have to live inside your household. You don't have to deal with them every single day, right? So you don't this you have to understand the mentality of the woman that you choose is the mentality that is going to raise your children that's the mentality that's going to nurture who and what you are when you lay down with her and you become one with her you become one with all that she is 
This is the covenant that you're making, that you're willing to become one with all this person is. So if they have all kind of psychological and spiritual and emotional things going on, do you want to become one spiritually with all that they are? So make sure you're choosing somebody that is a crown where you said, I'll become one with her. Not because of how she looks, but because of what's on the inside of her. But of course, she got to look good too. Men are visual. I'm not going to, you know, but make sure that the internal quality far surpasses because that is what you're going to fuse and connect with. Is that internal quality. Last but not least, we got Proverbs 31 verse 3. It says, do not give your strength to women, nor your ways to that which destroys kings. All right, guys. So I'm going to close out with that. Do not give your strength to women. Seek the kingdom of God first and all these things will be added to you. If you chase after women, you're going to find a lot of women who you fuse and become one with that can bring misfortune into the lives of certain men by being attached and one with those women spiritually. Right. You won't have the emotional baggage a woman might have. But what about the spiritual baggage that comes from the act of becoming one with women that are not whole and complete spiritually first? All right, guys. Peace, peace and love. Hit the like button. Drop a comment in the comment section. Three hour class uh, coming very soon. Uh, and I'm going to keep these videos coming. I got a lot of coming soon. Peace, guys. Peace, peace, peace and love, man. All glory, honor, and praise of my Father in heaven. In the name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. If you want to have any questions about salvation, email me at gmail.com.